Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're exploring COG Video X, which is a local solution for video generation. And I have to say, it's actually a pretty impressive model. If you've been looking for something else other than runway, cling, and something that you can run locally, this might be the solution for you. So what exactly is COG Video X? Well, up until this point, it was a text to video only model, and they've recently just added image to image. And as I said earlier, the results are very impressive. And I, I almost think that the results could rival Luma. Uh, I was very surprised with the images that I put in and the animations that I got. And I think in some cases it was even better than some of the results I've gotten with Luma in the past. Having said that, I haven't tried out the new 1.5 update yet, so that might have changed drastically. The model also does have the limitation of only being able to do 480 by 720 wide, which means you can't do vertical video, you can't do any other resolutions, and if you want anything usable, you'll probably have to upscale it. Despite that though, it's a really good starting point. I'm gonna throw up here a couple of videos that I did with the text to image, because today we're gonna to focus on image to image. However, the instructions I'm gonna give you today for installation will work for COG Video X, and you can use it for both situations. So let's dive right in. So as usual, we're gonna do this on Comfy UI. And to install this in Comfy UI, you only need to go to Manager, the Customs Node Manager, and install the following node groups. The Comfy UI Video Helper Suite, KJ Nodes for Comfy UI, and the Comfy UI COG Video X Wrapper. You could also just drag in the JSON file, which you can find in the link below, and it will just tell you what the missing nodes are. Once you've done that and you've dragged in the JSON that I sent below, it should give you a workflow that looks like this. We'll just quickly go through the key nodes just so you know what everything is and what it does. And I'll show you a couple of generations that I've made. So let's start over here with the load clip. Now, it's important to note that this does work with the same T5 model that you get with Flux as well as Stable Diffusion 3. I have seen a few people use a, this Google version. I'm actually honestly not sure if it's any different from the Flux one, but if you want it, you can access it by going into Manager, Model Manager, and just type in T5. And you can find it down here. You'll find the FP8 version and the FP16 version. I have the FP8 version installed. And for those of you that don't remember, this is the component that translates your text into concepts that the model can reproduce. So if you want better prompt adherence and you've got the GPU for it, go for the FP16 model. Then over here, we've got some text encoders, which is just the, the prompt windows, uh, and these are COG video specific. So we've got one here for the positive prompt, one for the negative prompt, which comes pre-filled with, uh, this video is not of a high quality, uh, it has low resolution, watermark present in each frame, strange motion trajectory, and so on. Basically, here we're telling it what are the things we don't want it to do, and this all makes sense. You can adjust the strength, and that feeds into this COG video sampler, which is a COG video specific sampler. Beyond that, you've got here the COG video loader. Um, there's one node here called download COG video model, which basically what it does is it, you've got all of the COG models over here in a drop down. If you don't have it a, and you try and generate something the first time, it will download that model. And what we want to be using is this one, the 5B I, that is image to video. And the rest of these are the text to video models. Over here in the sampler, we don't want to touch the height and width. We can adjust the number of frames, the steps of the generation, CFG, uh, and so on, this is all fairly standard. And then a video decoder here, which basically acts as your VAE decoder. And finally, the video combine, which puts all of the frames together. Then down over here, we have the image input. We have a resizer that adjusts the image dimensions uh, so that it, they work with COG. What I've been doing is if I use a source image that isn't fit to these dimensions, it will stretch it but you'll still get a good animation uh, and I'll show the results in a minute. And then what I do is I just go into a video editor and resize it back to how I want. That works pretty well and then put it through an upscaler. And that's pretty much it. This is just a quick video to go through the setup process for the COG Video X. If you have any issues, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. And here are a couple of videos that I have generated. Additionally, down below, you will find the JSON files or the JSON workflows for this particular workflow, the text to image workflow. And then for my Patreons, I have a lazy workflow which allows you to generate and animate the video all in the same frame. So you can do a whole bunch of things with the model without having to load up different workflows. That's available exclusively to my Patreons. So here are the videos, enjoy. So what did you guys think? Will you be using COG Video X? Did you find the results as good or better than any of the commercial models out there? I'm very curious to know. And hopefully we will see additional resolutions and sizes coming out of this model, especially since it's not based on stable video, which the text to video model is based on. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next one.